welcome back to Yoda King channel. On today's video, I'm gonna be replacing my stock springs to Old Man Emu Heavy Duty Springs and Old Man Emu Heavy Duty Dakar Leaves. I've already replaced my OEM shocks, the Bilstein 4600 to their identical brother, the 5100s. The only difference is that you are able to get a two inch lift to the front of your truck with the 5100s. Though I've replaced my shocks, I will still demonstrate how to go about it. This is the most budget friendly way to go if you want to get a two inch lift max. This is going to clear my 35 inch mud tires and the difficulty of this is easy to medium. This should take you no more than six to eight hours tops. Without further ado, let's get to it. Now I'm going to remove my skid plate using 12 millimeter socket. So the next thing I'm going to do here is loosen my lower control arms and mark my alignment cams here so that I can safely take it back to the alignment shop and get these aligned. And next step, I'm going to put this floor jack right under the lower control arm for support. And then this will allow me to take pressure off my shocks and remove my bottom bolt from the shock. Now, if you're going to go with the heavy duty springs and go with a two inch lift like I am, I highly recommend taking it down to your local off-road shop and get these loaded because they are impossible to install unless you have a strut and spring compressor. I paid $30, believe it or not, at a local Napa store equipped with a mechanic shop. If taking it to the shop to have them compress it, then only remove the three nuts around the strut assembly. And this will keep the spring and strut together for them to tinker with it. Then remove the bottom bolt to your spring and strut and take it to the shop. But from this point on, I'm going to continue for the purpose of this video as I am only replacing my shocks. There are three 14 millimeter bolts holding the top of the shock onto the shock bucket. Just remove the front two and then move to the one in the rear. This bolt can't be hard to reach, so just do what you can. So next you're going to move on to the top of your shock and it's a uh, 17 millimeter, I'm going to use a crescent wrench and a vice grip. The vice grip is going to be to prevent my shock from spinning. Next step, remove 19 millimeter nut. Next, we are going to remove the two 19 millimeter bolts left and right. Don't touch the center that holds the ball joint assembly and the steering knuckle. This would help me drop the lower control arm down and free up the shock easily. If not, you're going to fight it hard to remove it. With the top three bolts removed, we can move on to the 19 millimeter bolt that is holding the bottom of the shock to the lower control arm. And then once that nut is off, the bolt can be removed. If you notice that it's still tough to remove, carefully just strike the end of that bolt with a hammer just don't damage it because you're going to need to use that bolt. At this point, the shock will be free and the lower control arm will extend down and just carefully remove that uh, shock out of the uh, shock bucket and off the vehicle. Now I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison with the old man emus to my left and stock springs to the right. Now look at the difference. That's about two inch. You're going to get a massive increase with these old man emus and the Bilstein's 5100. Now, I was able to do a one and a half inch lift without taking it down to the shop to get these professionally spring compressed. But if you're gonna go with that last half inch that the 5100s give you, you're gonna need to take it to the pros, man. Don't even try it. Uh, I did and about killed myself. My good friend Eli, who welded the driver's side CMR in my latest cab mount relocation video, happened to buy a spring compressor online, wasn't rated for a heavy duty spring like these old man emus. And I tried to compress these to get that last half inch and that thing broke off so fast and that spring missed my head by inches and hit the top of my ceiling, almost hit my rig and I was like, time out, I'm taking this to the shop, trust me. Don't 
let it be your final destination. So as you can see here, I have it now at inch and a half. I'm gonna move it down to stock height. And you can get away with these heavy duty old man emus on stock height, half inch, inch, inch and a half. Now it's time to do this reverse order. I'm gonna start with that rubber top portion of my spring. I'm gonna go ahead and put that and seat it in the shock bucket and finger tighten this down. Next step, install the shock with spring and into the shock bucket. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and slide my bottom bolt of my shock in and just finger tighten it. Now, as I'm jacking up my shock and spring, I am ensuring that the center of that bolt is going directly into the hole. Now just a tip for you folks, um, use Loctite when you're going back with your bolts. I use the blue 242 thread locker. Uh, to me that's enough because uh, the temperature range is the same as the red, the red 271. The blue uh, temperature range is 65 to 300 Fahrenheit, same with the red. Only um, when you're going to remove the blue Loctite, you just need a hand tool. And with the red, it's only removable with heat. Uh, to the nut or the stud for five minutes at 450 degrees and then you need your hand tool So blue will suffice and make sure you put that on all your bolts when you're going back Well, I waited till the next day to have my buddy Eli come and give me a hand with the leaf springs. I thought it'd be a good idea just because how heavy they are. But honestly, you can do them by yourself. Just take a little longer. I tend to get this eerie feeling when I get under the truck and maybe I'm big dealing it, but I bought four of these ProLift six ton jacks on Amazon. At the time they were 90, now they're going for 67 in 2022. I'll leave a link in the description below. down next step remove the lower shock bolt using a 17 millimeter socket once the nut is removed you may need to use a hammer to remove the bolt from the lower shock mount
You can also replace your rear shocks this way by removing the top bushing nut after removing the lower shock bolt. When replacing the shock, use new shock bushings and make sure you tighten the top nut down to your specific shock spec. Next step, I'm gonna remove the U-bolts with the proper socket. For me is 22 millimeter, depending on U-bolt type might be different. I will be reusing my bump stop, so I'm gonna set it aside. Next, I will be removing the parking brake cable spring clip with a 14 millimeter socket. Now I'm gonna lower the axle just enough for the leaf pack pin to separate from the axle housing. I'm just gonna make sure here that I'm not overextending the brake or the ABS line. Next step, I'm going to remove the bolt from the front frame pocket using a 19 millimeter socket. And here I'm going to use a pry bar to remove that bolt because it's pretty seized up in there. Next, I'm gonna remove the upper and lower nut from the spring shackle with a 19 millimeter socket. And just a nice little tip, look how the shackle is. You wanna make sure that you put that back the same way you see that right here. Also, you're gonna to wanna to mimic how the nuts and bolts are in the same orientation with the nuts facing on the outside of the truck frame you will run into problems if you don't do it the same way you took it off. Now take a look at these two leaf springs side by side. The Old Man Emu is so much more bigger and heavier. This is why you're going to need another person to remove these if possible. Is it doable to do it by yourself? Yes, of course. Everything's possible, but you might run into some issues. This will give you an approximately about two inch of lift with a constant 660 pound load these also require new longer rear u-bolts and they're not included i'll leave a link on the description below to everything i bought to make this mod possible next step we're going to install the polyurethane bushings make sure you grease these really good and use a very good grease i don't know what uh, this grease was that was brought to me but it is not good for this application because my leaf springs after four months started squeaking. Use the Pyroplex Blue 2 by Castro. I heard it's really good. You're gonna thank me down the line. Now these bushings come apart. One is gonna keep the sleeve and just install these on both sides and then tap it with a mallet or whatever you can. Just make sure you don't break the plastic. You wanna hit it with something that's pretty soft. Now, I apologize here. I did not get a recording of me properly installing these shackles, but here is a couple pictures that could help.
Now next up, I'm going to install the bolt from the front frame pocket using my 19 millimeter socket and I'm going to torque this at 89 pounds. Next step, I'm going to install both bolts for my rear shackle and tie in just the top one and torque it to 89 pounds and I'm going to leave the bottom bolt loose. You'll see why at the very end. And next step, I'm going to go ahead and land my rear shock absorbers and cradle that into that pocket ever so perfectly. And I'm going to slide my bolt and I'm going to torque that bottom bolt to 43 pounds and the top bolt should be torqued at 15 pounds. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and install the brake line bracket bolt with a 12 millimeter socket. I'm going to climb to the back of my rig and jump up and down to make sure that them shackles in the rear cradle perfectly. And then I'm going to go ahead and torque that bottom bolt to 89 pounds. There was an old wise journeyman lineman I used to work with. He had this phrase he'd say to me, little bites. This was in reference to working overtime. He said little bites will add up one hour here, two hours there. He'd say that to me when I would complain about not getting enough all at once. He was right. At the end of the pay period, it was a sweet check. Same thing here, my friend. Don't overwhelm yourself thinking you have to buy and do everything all at once. Yes, it would be nice, but not realistic in this economy. Little bites, fans. That's how I do it. Stay up to date with some new content by subscribing to my channel. I've got much more videos to come in the next several weeks. Hope you found this video to be helpful in making your truck feel ready. Keep it real, ladies and gents. Peace.